Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, this is a quick tutorial video about D&D and Roll20 character creation. Of course, we'll be using the Roll20 website to be playing D&D. I believe D&D is an amazing game where you can roleplay and you have limitless opportunities as well as utilizing teamwork and yeah, there's just way, there's so much to say about D&D, but basically it's a role-playing game where you can level up, work alongside your party, and get some very fun and memorable moments out of that game. Anyways, welcome everyone that is joined by Discord group, uh, mainly U of M students, welcome, welcome, U of M, of course, and yeah, there's lots of you that are pretty new to D&D and have no, absolutely no idea what it is and what to do that's totally all right we all gotta start somewhere so this is gonna be a quick video basically on how to create a character in dnd which is relatively a simple process and learning dnd can be fun as well um I was, i've also attached uh two videos that are crucial for understanding combat and they're basically an introduction to dnd most of the time you'll learn as you play so first let's get let's get down to uh making your first character roll 20. You do not have to worry about grabbing a picture for your character and getting into the complicated details. It'll be it's a it's a beginner's guide after all. So let's start let's get started. So for our first character let's just give it a test name because why not? So save changes and preferably D D would be better if we were in physical sessions but due to this pandemic and I have to use Roll20. And Roll20 has some great advantages in itself. Uh, its character creation system is actually pretty good, not gonna lie. So, let's use the character mask, which is this button right here. And you get brought up to this page. You can just skip all this because you don't even have to read it. <laughs> so first, all characters have a race in D&D. Your race determines, of course, uh, your bit, some, a bit of your influences, a bit of your abilities and such roleplay. But, for new players, I, I always recommend starting out with whatever you liked, really. Um, I recommend limiting yourself to the PHB races. They are easier for you to control in a way, but my recommendation, you don't have to follow. Feel free to go as a bugbear if you want, or <laughs> go bald. But yeah, so let's suppose we want to make a human character, yes? So... You get to pick your alignment. Oh wait, that's a bit of okay. There we go. So your alignment determines uh, your morals, basically, and uh, there's a lot of memes regarding the alignments. Um, lawful means you follow. So there's the good alignment, which means you're generally good. Uh, you tend not to uh, be evil and exercise uh, unfairness and <laughs> your evil powers over everyone else. Generally. In that kind of a person that would step up to do the right thing. And lawful good, you just follow the law. To neutral. <laughs> <And then, laughs> oh my god, yeah. But anyways, if you want to be evil, you're on the evil alignment, so you got the neutral. But I'm going to attach a meme in the Discord, and it will be help, useful for explaining all of them. Let's just go neutral good. So, that's our size. It will give us a token size, which is about... That's how that's how big our token is if compared to the medium size. Our speed, I'll get into that later. So you get to pick some languages. By default, you learn common for human, and you get to pick any, any other language you like. So I'm gonna learn Elvish and sub race. I'm just gonna be a standard human. So this is what happens if you pick standard human sub race. All your ability score increases by plus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get a quick summary of. Uh, <laughs> everything you've been cho choosing so far. So let's go on to class, which is probably the best thing you're gonna get as a new player. So for new players, I recommend every any class, but of course, just be careful of, of Warlock, it might be way too much for you. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you get to pick what class you want, and uh, if you're picking a class, you get a small preview, but a right, and it tells you, well, let, we're going to skip all the uh, flavor description and just, just get right down to it. So, you get to learn, you get proficiency with weapons, armor, and you get trained for danger, all of this shit. <laughs> um, yeah, 
and it will basically just give you a quick description of a fighter. Fighter, of course, you learn abilities and such, which is all indicated on this table down here as you level up. And you get to pick your skill proficiencies, which I'll again get. Uh, I'll touch. I'll get right into it after we make this character. These will make your the sh skills you choose be proficient, and you get to pick a fighting style, either two weapon fighting, all that. You'll get a summary of what the fighting style is at the right. See, you get you get to figure out what two weapon, f uh, what great weapon fighting is. So that's at the top. When you roll a one or two on a damage dice for an attack, you can reroll the dice and must use the new roll. So that's for great weapon fighting. But you know what? Let's just go to weapon fighting. So when you engage to weapon, you can add your ability, ability modifier to damage attack attack. So do a wheel now. Well, you could always do a wheel, but now you can do some extra damage. Second wind, that's your uh, an ability you learn at first level spell as a fighter. And here's the equipment you start off with. Now we're going on to the abilities, the most fanciest thing about the ND. So, mainly we're going to be using the point buy uh, mechanism for getting our abilities, where you get to allocate abilities into strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, and oh, and nor sanity, everyone. Uh, perhaps should I have should pro that attribute. I will, it will not be used in D&D, it's just an optional feature by Roll20. Now, damn it, I should probably clear that, uh, saying to give me a second to remove that, um, ability from Roll20. Yep. Sanity attribute. Interesting. Okay. There we go. I turned it off, maybe if I... Go back a page, maybe. Nope. Alright. Well, anyways, let's pretend it's insanity is in there. So you get to allocate your points into strength, blah, 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 blah. But of course, you have limited, so you gotta decide. Strength basically determines how strong you are, and basically determines how much damage. If you're using strength mainly, determines how much damage you deal with your melee weapons. And. Uh, determines um, your carrying capacity as well and strength is also very well for you know kicking down doors uh, making strength saving throws against something that prompts you to and basically strength can determine your athletics as well so if you ever want to grapple someone and there's much more to strength but strength pretty useful in survival as well dexterity basically your cut um, your speed, basically, how fast you move, sort of that thing. Your dexterity determines your armor class, your speed, and very useful uh, attribute for maneuvering around things and avoiding traps. You're gonna have, you're gonna always be using, making dexterity saving throws. So, this is what dexterity is. Constitution is how much. Basically, let me put it simple for you. It's how much you can get hit and still keep going. That's your constitution. Basically, determines your health. And it's very useful spell for um, surviving traps and just, it's so many spells and um, traps that constitution can be used for, basically. But basically, it determines your stature and how strong you can survive against <laughs> hell. Anyways, intelligence, pretty simple ability to t for wizards and probably other classes, maybe. Very useful in uh, helping you cast your spells. Intelligence is a pretty uh, important kind of uh, attribute for, of course, determining your IQ. And not really not kind of important with saving throws unless you meet a monster that requires an intelligence saving throw. But it determines very useful uh, pro other sub skills in your class as well. Wisdom is just. Really, how your perception of things and um, how the experience you have in this world, and that's what wisdom basically is. But charisma, pretty self-explanatory. I'm not even gonna get into detail. So let's just set up our ability scores to be such as this, and there, and we have four points left. So let me uh, charisma. It gave me way too many points because I had the sanity. Available. So you in reality, these are probably gonna be much lower if I didn't enable that sanity. So our ability scores are determined. 
let's go next. Hmm. Choose the background. Your background, very useful for roleplay as well. Your background will give you some, um, some unique abilities and feats that you, and other proficiencies as well that you can learn. And they're all player's handbook. Good. Let's suppose you are from a knight background. And, oh man, I do not like these points. In reality, these, these, uh, those things right up here are going to be much lower uh, if I didn't enable that. So, so it's a word of caution. So let's suppose we are from a noble background. This will tell you a sm small description. This will give you skill proficiencies. I already see I picked history as a proficiency. You get to pick a tool proficiency and another language proficiency, which again, I'll explain later. And you get position of privilege, another uh, um, character ability, basically. And you get to pick personality traits, but you're also more than welcome to write down your own personality traits. So I'm just going to randomly choose here for the sake of just this uh, tutorial. And equipment, of course. As a fighter, you get to determine your equipment. Uh, you can pick class equipment or starting wealth. I'm going to go with class equipment. So you get to pick your armor. Chainmail, why not? Uh, let's go with a uh, greatsword, perhaps? Maybe, uh, maybe? Mm, well, yeah, you get to pick your weapon, basically. Dungeoneer's pack, again, oh, is this Dungeoneer's pack gives you more sh shit in your, in your inventory. So again, to the right side, it's just another screen that, that helps you understand the game a little bit more. Spells, we're not a, we're not a um, spellcaster, so that section we can definitely skip. If you're a new person that wishes to try out a spell casting class, it's going to be a, a lot of fun. And I'm going to, if you ever need help, I'm going to be helping you out a lot with spells. Feats, you don't have to worry about it now. Basically, whenever you hit like a certain level threshold, you can decide to learn a feat or increase a, a little bit of your ability scores. A feat basically gives you like an extra sub ability somewhat. Bio, of course. Usually in Roll20, my players never uh, tend to fill the age, height, weight, but sometimes they do. Um, let's see, bio. Isn't there supposed to be a backstory here? Uh, there is supposed to be a backstory. There is supposed to um, be. I'll get right into the backstory in a second. And your hit points are automatically determined by the class at level 1. And the review, basically a review of your entire class. Not chosen a fighting style. Oh. Wow, okay. Yeah, I guess I gotta choose fighting style. Acrobatics. Athletics. Fighting style, sure. Uh, two weapon fighting, sure. That'll be good. There we go. Um, all looks good. The arcane is a mystery for you, of course. My name is this. <laughs> Amazing name for character. Alright. So, that's our character. Your fancy character sheet. It may all seem convoluted, but trust me. Pretty, pretty simple to understand. All you gotta know is that you're level 1, you know background, and you, your armor class is 16, which will determine if something hits you or not. And of course, you have your initiative, which will determine if you, which will be useful in determining if you kind of go first in battle or not with a dice roll. And your speed, which will determine how, mu how, f how f uh, much you can move in one turn. So, yeah. To your left hand corner, you got your ability scores. Oh wait, maybe it's not gonna be that low as I saw it. Maybe. And second win of course. Yeah, you can click on your abilities right here and your features and traits actually to determine to see more about your abilities. But we, what you gotta understand here is you can ignore these few options at the top because I'll be helping you out with that in the game. You know, in your bio, this is where you get to uh Fill in your back, your character backstory, your appearance, yep. and all this uh, shit. For now, don't worry about it. No, what you gotta understand is the following. Your armor class is uh, something that really is useful for you in battle. It will determine if you get hit by things. For example, an enemy decides to attack you. An enemy has to roll a d20 plus their attack modifier to see if they hit you. If the attack, if the number equals your armor class or is higher, it will hit. So let's uh, cover a quick example. So let's say you have a goblin, right? A goblin 
has a quick uh, a short sword out that's about to stab you in the chest so you can get all those organs splitting out of you. You have to roll d20. In this case, the goblin decides to uh, swing a sword around like a complete absolute dumbass and basically strikes a tree instead and gets his sword stuck there and absolutely misses you or does not fa or fails to penetrate. So in this case, the goblin failed to strike you because this roll did not it's did not match or exceed your armor class. That's another topic that you'll be learning in the videos of attaching this sword. And your ability modifiers are right here. So if I tell you to roll a strength a strength uh, a strength check or a dexterity check, basically you just roll D twenty and you do plus two. So your strength is two right here, this big number. So in to in reality you rolled a fifteen plus two. Uh, there's actually a macro I should have made for this, but basically you put one, a d20 as your dice type, and the modifier is plus two for your strength, and there you go, it's corrected right here, you can see in the equation sheet, and this is your amount of hit points of course, and all these small abilities right here, these are actually very useful abilities for doing a lot of things in roleplay, and yeah. The blue hot check things means that you have proficiency in those abilities, which gives them an additional plus two to those abilities, and your proficiency bonus increases as you level up. So, and these are your saving throws. Those are different from your checks. Uh, those are what you use to make a saving throw. But, since roll 20 is uh, very simple to use, in fact, uh, I'm going to make... You're going to actually have small buttons right here that will help uh, for you to roll it instead of manually going here to roll some dice or going here to roll some dice. So I'll try to simplify things in a matter, but it would be great if we could reuse some dice. But yeah, so if you guys have watched, I'm going to be attaching the combat video real soon in the Discord. So there's going to be a very cool diagram in combat that you'll be witnessing. Your action basically determines uh, all those all those things to the left corner here, left side actually here. But again, I'm not gonna go into much detail about it. It's for a video I will be attaching to Discord, and it will help you learn how to fight. So yeah, you have made your first character. Um, with no backstory whatsoever, but that's all right. Uh, here, so your everything you gotta know is right here. These will tell this right, this corner right here tells you your proficiencies. If you're fighting with a weapon that you're not proficient in, there's gonna be some penalties, of course, like disadvantage. Uh, you don't get to have all your checks at all, your modifiers and all that. So yeah. And here are your weapons, by the way. Of course, um, this will be explained in the video how to attack. But if you're just a lazy bum bum and oh sorry, if you're just a lazy person and you just want to attack. You just click on your ability right here. The first number will determine if it, if you hit. And this is how much damage you deal. Which is about 10 slashing damage. Again, you can also use this ability. Which will probably appear as a button right here. Where my cursor is. So yeah. That's all for the quick tutorial on making a Roll20 character. And I hope to see you all playing D&D. &D. Good luck everyone. And have a great day.